in South Plainfield um, with my parents and my older brother. And uh, first got a taste of uh, police work when I was probably like around 10 years old. Uh, my grandfather was a uh, class two police officer with the South Plainfield uh, Police Department. So I would see him put his uniform on, go to work, and uh, he would do parades and other special events. And I'd uh, usually watch him either out the window if the parade came by the house or uh, by sitting out front. So that was my first taste of uh, law enforcement. I got my, one of my first jobs was with the Dinellan Police Department as a police dispatcher. So for about five years, um, I worked uh, on the other side of law enforcement, so answering the phones. Uh, I was a 911 operator, so it gave me a, an idea of what goes on on the other side. And after about like five years of doing that, I decided I wanted to be uh, a police officer on the other side of the phone. Um, instead of answering the phone call, uh, be the person responding to, the, to whatever is being reported. I um, always loved dogs uh, growing up. We had two dogs, uh, always a big fan of it. Um, then I'd watch, listen, I watch TV like everyone else. And then the movies and stuff like that. I always saw like the canine handlers in the movies and different things like that. So when I got the opportunity, um, it was a, when I was with the sheriff's office, there was an opportunity to put in for, they were starting a canine unit. Um, I just, I was fortunate. I was the agency drug officer. And I also was one of the more senior officers that put in for it, and I was lucky to get the position that uh, started me off as a canine handler, and I ended up doing that for close to 15 years. It was back in uh, 2008. Um, there was a drug dealer that uh, Canine Dano had sniffed this drug dealer's girlfriend's car, found drugs in it, and, and that was going to put her away in jail. So this drug dealer made it known on the streets that because of that, uh, he's in essence had put a hit out on my dog, which also then put my uh, family at risk. Um, cause obviously if they come to the house to do something to the dog, uh, that would definitely, uh, threaten, uh, my wife and my two very young children at the time. Upon being arrested, uh, he made several threats on scene to me and the dog that he was, uh, he intended on putting a hit out and killing that dog. And then later on back with the PD, um, he had stated several times again that that dog is as good as dead wherever that dog is at meaning that he'd come to our house so now you can get up to what 18 months in jail and a pretty hefty fine that is uh, just the threat not any action well that's just it we're, we're connected by a leash and that was something that was paramount to uh, my sheriff frank provenzano that uh, we went to bat uh, i talked to senator kit bateman and uh, he got the ball rolling in trenton Together, they came up with a bill appropriately named Dano's Law. The bill would upgrade charges against anyone hurting or threatening an animal involved in law enforcement from a fourth-degree crime to a third-degree crime, punishable by three to five years in jail. I got a call from the uh, governor's office, and they said, hey, just want to let you know, um, there's a, a law named after your dog, and how do you feel? You know, so I, was, I was pretty much in awe with that. I thought that was pretty cool. I honestly didn't think it was ever going to happen because I was lobbying and it seemed like I kept hitting like a brick wall down in Trenton. But I went down there and I testified a couple times. But uh, bipartisan support, we had uh, people supporting it, both Republicans and Democrats. And once we got the bipartisan support, it moved pretty quick. And uh, the law remains on the books today. And I do believe it was the first law in the history of New Jersey to be named after an animal. So it's pretty cool. So back in 2019, had the opportunity to run for sheriff. I had been retired for a couple of years. I figured I'd throw my name in the mix. I uh, had no idea what politics was about. Uh, I got, I learned a lot in that, uh, that time period. It was kind of crazy, but uh, we ran a great countywide race. Uh, we lost the position by around 200 votes. So it was a very close race, um, but things worked out. Um, so uh, definitely uh, for anyone who's looking to get into politics, I say, you know, definitely, uh, take a second guess if that's really what you want to do but uh but it's fun you get to meet a lot of people got to meet a lot of people all across this county um and like i said the support they gave me was, was tremendous and i think that ended up playing a very big role then down the road um i got offered a position as, as the under sheriff which in essence is like the number two and uh i haven't looked back it's it's been a blast and i enjoyed a lot oh, so when i'm out at work uh, i like to spend time with my children um definitely uh you know going to concerts or uh, watching sporting events, they, they play sports. Um, I also enjoy personally, I like playing tennis, uh, so I find that is very relaxing. Uh, do that when the weather's really nice. Um, 
go uh, to the movies with my wife. Uh, we like doing that. There's, there's been too many great movies out there. There'll be more. Um, but just spending family time, I think that's important. So I do enjoy that. Uh, and it's fun. You know, we like being off. Uh, these jobs are very demanding, but it's nice to have all downtime and spend time with your family. I enjoy uh, doing charity work with the Somerset Regional Animal Shelter, um, helping behind the scenes like coordinate fundraisers and different things to help them raise money. Um, just recently in town, I helped uh, behind the scenes set up a, uh, it was like a skate park thing that they did at the municipal building with skateboarders and it actually, uh, it also brought in money for the animal shelter. So just trying to think of outside the box type ideas like that to bring awareness to uh, the shelter and the hundred and so animals a week that they uh, are able to get adopted and get new families. I find it to be just really rewarding when an animal comes in um, and gets adopted by a family and it leaves there and then that animal now has a family. That family now has this animal and uh, they go on and have a great life together. So it's a lot of fun. I do some work with the Arizona Cardinal Charities. Uh, I've been raising, helping them raise some money as well for about 20 years. Um, big brother, big sister programs out there that sit in seats that we purchase uh, for games. Um, enjoy doing that as well. What are your thoughts about the current state of police today and how they are perceived from a civilian's point of view? Well, I think the police today get, uh, my personal opinion, I think we get a raw deal. I mean, it seems like whenever we're on the news, it's always for the, the one or two bad things that are going on around the co entire country and not the uh, hundreds and thousands of good things that we do every day. Um, but let's keep it real. That's what sells newspapers and uh, gets people to tune in is the bad stuff. So, but overall, uh, it's a great profession. Um, the men and women who, who do it are amazing people. Um, I've been blessed to be around it for about 25, 26 years now and uh, wouldn't trade it for the world. But yeah, definitely the media does uh, look at us sometimes in a negative light and I think that's unfair. 99.9% um, .9 of the profession are heroes. And they're out there every day saving life, personal property, they're just good people. So that's my personal take on it.